Hi, I'm Paul from Symmetrix and today we'll be changing the batteries in iMac 4700 or an EX90 meter. Notice that the housings of the base model units look the same and changing the batteries will be a similar process in both meters. If your meter is sealed and the seal is controlled by a regulating agency, be sure of their rules before removing the seal. All settings will be retained if the meter loses power. The total is recorded to permanent memory every 15 minutes and that total will be recorded if the meter does lose power. Now, the first thing we need to do is open the housing. After being out in the field for a few years, it might be a little bit hard to start. What you need to do is to take a spanner wrench, a pipe wrench, or a channel lock, and just get this thing to barely get going. You get a quarter inch motion on there, and you can do it by hand. Open the housing. And once the lid is off, the display will either be held in with three snap to remove standoffs or three T15 Torx head screws which will be in the same spots. Once the display is out, you'll find that the battery is retained with the strap and if that strap is tucked down around the edge of the battery you might need a tool to lift that up maybe a needle nose to lift it up but once the tails up you can just pull that strap loose pull the battery out of the holder disconnect the battery from the meter and in your battery replacement kit there will be A new battery. Put that battery in the battery holder. Tighten up the strap so that the battery doesn't flop around in the housing. On the battery connector there's a little rib. That rib aligns with the slot in the receptacle. Plug the connector into the display. Make sure everything's still attached here. There are some desiccant packs down inside the housing. Remove those. And again, in the battery replacement kit, there is a bag of desiccants. Take those desiccants, drop them down in the housing, making sure that they completely clear the threads here so they don't get stuck. Make sure that the wires are clear of all the threads, any place that they might get stuck inside the housing. Line up the snap-in standoffs. Snap that in there. If this was a, uh, a display that had the T15 Torx head screws, just screw those right back in there. The display lid has this O-ring on here. Make sure it's clean. If it's dirty or cracked or beat up, uh, replace it. There is a replacement in your battery replacement kit. Clean the O-ring sealing surface. After being out in the field for a few years, you'll have sand and dirt and mud built up in there. Put the lid on. Screw it all the way down. If it's not screwed all the way down, you'll get moisture and dirt in the housing and over time that will destroy your meter. Once the O-ring makes contact, torque it down enough to compress the O-ring. If your meter needs a security seal, there is one in your battery replacement kit. Put that seal on the meter and you are done. So if you're changing the battery in a P-style unit, this is a little bit different. Uh, the battery is in the black back compartment of the P-style unit. 
Uh, once we get this open, there is no display because the display is on the opposite side of the housing. Battery will be right in here. You'll have your 15 pin connector in here also. Uh, you will want to disconnect the strap, pull the battery connector out, put the new battery in, connect the strap, and there's two battery connectors, two receptacles down there. Uh, they are both exactly the same. Plug the battery into either one of them. It makes no difference whatsoever. Plug it all the way in. Put your desiccant packs back in there. Well, again, you're going to want to check your O-ring. Make sure it's clean. Make sure that the O-ring seal is clean on the housing. Screw the lid back down. Once it touches, compress that O-ring and you're done. If you're changing the battery in a remote unit, the process is just about the same because the inside is almost exactly the same as a base model unit. Now this remote model unit, once we get the lid off, you will see has the T15 Torx head screws on it. We'll take those out. We magnetize our screwdrivers so that the screw sticks to it a little bit better. That is a good idea if you're doing more than one of these. Take the screws out. Oops. Take the screws out. And you'll see it's very similar on the inside. Uh, just like the base model unit, we will pull the old battery out and we'll put the new battery in. Connect the strap. We will connect the battery. It turns on. So my remote unit isn't plugged into a meter base, so it's going to say COM fail when I plug in the, uh, the battery. So here we are, we plugged in the battery and this says COM fail. Uh, put the desiccant packs in, screw your, your T15 screws in there. Now, if you have a meter that says COM fail at any point in here, uh, you, that is a fault that will not fix itself uh, and it's probably just some plug that's come undone. Com fail simply means that the upper board isn't talking to the lower board. On a remote model unit, the lower board is in the meter base, wherever that is, and, in, uh, and the upper board is in the remote housing on a remote model unit. Again, screw the lid down till the O-ring touches. Give it a little tighten. Some people don't give that little tighten in there. If you don't tighten that down, the meter will leak. The meter will fail over time. We're closed. We're set. And now uh, the remote model unit is uh, finished. So that's uh, all there is to changing a battery in one of our meters. If you'd like information on this or other products that we may have, uh, please visit us at cmetrics.com and thanks for watching.